Example number 11. Express 7 sine theta minus 5 cos theta in the form R sine theta minus alpha, where R is greater than 0 and alpha is between 0 and 90 degrees. Then hence solve the equation 7 sine theta minus 5 cos theta is equals to 4.3 for theta between 0 and 360 degrees. Now we've been given 7 sin theta minus 5 cos theta and we've been told to express it in the form R sin theta minus alpha where R is greater than 0. So when they say R is greater than 0, they are telling you to take the value of R which is positive. Are you seeing that? And when they say alpha is between 0 and 90 degrees, they are telling you to take the value of alpha which is an acute angle, isn't it? Meaning alpha, when you will be calculating, you will get very many values of alpha. But they only need the value of alpha, which is an acute angle. So the first step, we start with the sine difference angle formula. So we have sine theta minus alpha. So what is sine theta minus alpha? So that is sine theta sine alpha, sine theta cos, cos alpha. Remember. If you have sin A minus B, that is sin A cos B. If A is subtraction, the other side is also subtraction, isn't it? Then you swap them, you now have sin B cos A. So it means where there is the A, we put theta, where there is B, we put alpha, isn't it? Are you seeing that? So sin theta minus alpha is what? Is sin theta cos alpha minus sin alpha cos theta. You've expanded that. Having expanded that, you need R sin theta minus alpha. Meaning you multiply both sides of the equation with R, isn't it? You multiply both sides of the equation with, with R. So multiply both sides of the equation with R. Meaning you must bracket both sides of the equation to mean one thing. So if you multiply both sides of the equation with R, we get R <coughs> sine theta minus alpha on the left hand side of the equation to be equals to, if you multiply here, you get R sine theta cos alpha. So R sine theta cos alpha is, can be written as R cos alpha sine theta because there we have 7 sine theta, meaning we need sine theta as the, as the term we are going to compare its coefficient. Are you seeing that? Because we add 7 sine theta minus 5 cos theta. So it is sine theta we are interested in to be the terms we are looking for its coefficient. Are we together? So we have 7 cos alpha sine R cos alpha sine theta minus R sine alpha cos theta. So if you bracket, what is the coefficient of sine theta here? The coefficient of sine theta is R cos alpha, isn't it? Then the coefficient of cos theta, the other side is R sine alpha and there is negative sign between them because our equation also has a negative sign between them, isn't it? So it means this one is equal to 7 sin theta minus minus 5 cos theta. So if you look at that, you can see the coefficients of sin theta must be equal and the coefficients of cos theta must be equal, isn't it? Are you seeing that? So the coefficient of sine theta here is R cos alpha. So it means R cos alpha must be equal to 7 because both of them are coefficient of sine theta because we want to express that equation in this form R sine theta minus alpha, isn't it? So you compare the coefficients, isn't it? Then you go there. So if you make cos alpha the subject of the formula, you divide both sides with R. So you get cos alpha is 7 over R. You move again, you compare the coefficients of cos theta, we have R sine alpha to be the same as 5. Because both of them are coefficients of cos, cos theta. So the coefficients of cos theta must be the same, isn't it? Are you seeing that? So if we divide both sides of the equation with R, we have, we have sine alpha to be 5 over R. So from there, we can now get the value of alpha. How do we get the value of alpha? We use the tan ratio because tan ratio is going to give us a ratio of sine alpha and cos alpha. It's going to eliminate R. Are you seeing that? 
So it means when you have tan alpha, tan alpha is supposed to be sin alpha over cos. Because tan is sin over cos, isn't it? So tan alpha is sin alpha over cos. Alpha. So sin alpha over cos alpha is sin alpha times 1 over cos alpha. Isn't it? Sin alpha over cos alpha is sin alpha times 1 over cos <coughs> alpha. So what do you get there? Where well, there is sin alpha, put the value of sin alpha, that is 5 over r, then times 1 over cos alpha means the reciprocal of cos alpha, isn't it? So the reciprocal of cos alpha is r over 7. So r goes with r, you remain with tan alpha to be 5 over 7. So if tan alpha is equal to 5 over 7, then it implies alpha is the tan inverse of 5 over 7. And you get that one to be, what is the value of alpha? 35.5. So tan inverse width of alpha is 35. Tan inverse of 5 over 7, which is giving us alpha, is 35.5 degrees. So we record alpha is 35.5 degrees. Now having found that, we now look for the value of this R. How do we find R? So we find R using the Pythagorean identity. Because R, because R is in terms of cos and sine, and it is only the Pythagorean identity which relates cos and sine, isn't it? So if you find R with the Pythagorean identity, from Pythagorean identity, cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha is equal to 1, isn't it? So cos squared alpha, where there is cos squared alpha, you substitute. Cos alpha is 7 over r, so it means it is 7 over r squared. That is cos squared alpha, isn't it? Then plus sine squared alpha, you substitute. Sine alpha is 5 over r, then it is squared. Because it is sine squared alpha, isn't it? It's equal to 1. So 7 squared, here we have 7 squared over r squared, plus 5 squared over r squared, is equal to 1. So if you multiply both sides of the equation with r squared, you remain with, on the left hand side of the equation, you remain with 7 squared plus 5 squared is equal to r squared. So for you to get r, you find for the square root on both sides of the equation. So r is the square root of 5 squared plus 7 squared. What do you get to be r? The square root of 5 squared plus 7 squared? You have? You have 8.6. 8.6. So that is 8.6. So you found R to be 8.6. So we found R. You know, we are telling it to be positive because square root is positive or negative. But we were told R is greater than zero, meaning you take the value of R which is positive. Are you seeing that? So R is just 8.6 because a square root of something is supposed to be plus or minus, isn't it? But they want the value of R which is greater than zero, which is positive, isn't it? So having found R and alpha, we now go back to our equation. You go back to your equation, and what was your equation? Your equation was 7 sine theta minus 5 cos theta. So if you look at this equation, it means for you to get R, you don't need to go that long process. You just use the Pythagoras theorem. R is the hypotenuse. So R is the hypotenuse squared, then you check the coefficients, the sum of the two coefficients squares, regardless of the sign between them. Are you seeing that? So you didn't do need that long process to get R. That's just for explanation to see how that is coming about, isn't it? So R is simply the Pythagoras theorem. R squared is 7 squared plus 5 squared, regardless of the sign between them. Because the sign between them is in case of the compound angle that exists there, the sign difference angle formula, isn't it? Are you seeing that? So R is simply the Pythagoras theorem. So for you to get R, you find the square root of both sides. So you get R is 8.6. So having found R and theta, our equation 7 sine theta minus 5 cos theta is now in the form R sine theta minus alpha. It is now in that form. So you substitute the value of R, you found is 8.6. Then sine theta minus the value of alpha, you found is 35.5 degrees. So you express that expression 
in the form of and theta minus alpha. So that is how to express a compound angle expression in that form. So we've expressed it in the form R sin theta minus alpha. So this one we found is 8.6 sin theta minus 35.5 degrees. Then the second part. Hence solve the equation 7 sin theta. 7 sin theta minus 5 cos theta is equal to 4.3. Following that equation is now very easy. So where there is 7 sin theta minus 5 cos theta, you substitute its value. Its value 7 sin theta minus 5 cos theta is the same as it is the same as 8.6 sin theta minus 35.5 degrees. Are you seeing that? So having substituted that value, we get rid of the coefficient, meaning we divide both sides with 8 point. You divide both sides with 8.6 to remove the coefficient. Divide both sides of the equation with 8.6. So you remain with sine theta minus 35.5 degrees is equal to 0 0.5. Are you seeing that? Are you together? So you can let you can let theta minus 35.5 degrees to be A senior. So if you let that A to be theta minus 35.5 degrees, then it means sine A is equal to 0 0.5, isn't it? So what is A? A is the sine inverse of 0 0.5. So this 0 0.5 is positive, meaning we are looking for the quadrant where sine is positive. Are you seeing that? When you let theta minus 35.5 degrees to be A, then it means sine A is what is equal to 0 0.5, isn't it? So A is the sine inverse of 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 is positive, meaning we get the sine inverse of 0 0.5, then we are looking for the quadrant where sine is positive, isn't it? So draw the unit circle. All students take our class. So sine inverse of 0 0.5 is 30 degrees. So in the first quadrant, we have 30 degrees. Second quadrant is 180 minus 30 degrees, which is 150. Third quadrant is 180 plus 30 degrees, which is 210. Fourth quadrant is 360 minus 30 degrees, which is 330. Isn't it? So we want quadrants where sign is positive, isn't it? So which quadrants are sign is positive? First one. The first quadrant sign is positive because all of them are positive. Second quadrant sign is positive. Third quadrant we don't need. Fourth quadrant we don't need. Because third quadrant only time is positive, isn't it? Fourth quadrant only goes is positive. So it means the angles we need are the angles we need are 30 degrees and 150 degrees, isn't it? So we have our A is equal to 30 degrees or to or 150 degrees, isn't it? Are we together? So we found A, which is equal to theta minus 35.5 degrees, to be equal to 30 degrees or 150. Are we together? So from there you can now see what we have there. So it means theta minus 35.5 degrees is equal to 30 degrees or 150 degrees, because theta minus 35.5 degrees was A, isn't it? So how do we get theta? Because theta is what we are looking for, isn't it? So negative that 5.5 degrees going on the other side of the equation, it becomes positive, isn't it? So it means theta is 30 degrees plus 35.5 degrees or 150 degrees plus 35.5 degrees. So what are the values of theta? 65.5 degrees or 185.5 degrees. So can you take that in that equation? Can you press 7, where there is theta, you put 65.5 degrees, so that you press 7 sine 65.5 degrees minus 5 cos 65.5 degrees. What do you get? 7 sine theta minus 5 cos theta. 7 sine 65.5 degrees minus 5 cos 65.5 degrees. What do you have? 
approximately 4.3, which is the solution in Romanto, isn't it? 